We've got the Rams position battles you need to be looking out for during training camp. Also, what will the Rams record be after 10 games? That's coming up next on Locked on Rams. You are Locked on Rams, your daily Los Angeles Rams podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Ramley, and welcome to another episode of Locked On Rams, your daily podcast covering your Los Angeles Rams, free and available wherever you get your podcast. Locked On Rams, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're also available over on YouTube, so if you haven't yet, do us a huge favor and subscribe to the Locked On Rams YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, hit that like button, and also which position battle are you most looking forward to let us know down below in the comments my name is doug mccain friends call me dmac you can follow me on x and instagram at dmac underscore la i've been covering la sports for over a decade 24 7 sports bleacher report dodgers nation the rams for locked on and as always i'm joined by the rams pre half and post game show host for the rams flagship radio station espn 710 la he's entering his ninth season ninth season wow nine seasons already for mr travis rogers as the pre half and post game shows for your Los Angeles Rams. You can follow him on X at Travis Rogers. And we got a jam packed show. We're talking position battles. We're doing the next five games in our schedule breakdown. What will the Rams record be after 10 games? Also, we continue our list on the most important Rams entering the 2024 season. But first, this episode of Locked on Rams brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more as playoffs wind down. The sports stop sporting like we want them to. But this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Now, Travis, speaking of lists, Real quick, we just heard this right now. We're going to spend a whole topic on it tomorrow. But the list for the top 100 greatest athletes of the 21st century has been released by ESPN. And they got our guy, Mr. Aaron Donald, at 20. As wow. the 20th best athlete, he's sandwiched in between Diana Taurasi and Lewis Hamilton. And I think it pretty much goes out saying we probably both think he should be a little higher on this list. But AD at 20, good to see him getting some love there. Look, 20 is pretty darn good. If we're talking about a quarter of a century here uh, into the the 21st century, and he's in the top 20, that's pretty remarkable. I it was I, I you dropped out for a second. Did you say Lewis Hamilton or Lewis Hamilton's car was uh, <laughs> ahead of him? I, I I'm I'm a little I'm a little curious there because I feel like the car does a lot of the work. Exactly right. I mean, that's the truth about that. I mean, yeah. and AD is like a combination, of like a Bugatti and like an eighteen wheeler and a Tesla yeah. Cybertruck and a Hummer. He's, he's a Bugatti and a John Deere tractor that just rips, you know what, out of the ground. Yeah, he's both. Yeah, I, I'm not. I don't feel good about Lewis Hamilton ahead of him, man. I'll just tell you that. But, but we'll, we'll uh, let that out tomorrow. But sure. our first segment here, we're going to talk about some of these position battles, and we're going to spend a lot of time getting really in depth on all these positions. But just kind of a general overview of kind of what to look for when training camp begins and some of these position battles. And we kind of hit on some of these already, but tight end is one that's going to be really interesting early on yeah. because Tyler Higby still out recovering from the torn ACL and MCL. And that's why they signed Colby Parkinson and Colby Parkinson is going to be filling those Higby shoes. Question is how well will he do it? Will the blocking be adequate? Will he be an asset in the passing game? And then behind him, you got Davis Allen. Davis Allen is extremely intriguing because of that catch radius, because of his height and the way he can go up and get balls and be a red zone threat. And then Hunter Long is another name that, of course, we've heard for so many years, His him being included in that Jalen Ramsey trade, him having the potential, but not realizing that potential. So really the big overarching really theme for the tight ends is that Higby is out. They signed Parkinson, but will they get that production? Look, it's a bummer that Higby's going to be out because he's been an important part of, of what they've done really during the entire Sean McVay era. He's been a pretty steady, consistent performer for the Rams. But if you're looking for a silver lining to losing a, a regular starter, I guess it's this, that we're going to get to see what it looks like with someone else, right? Maybe someone else can step into that role and, and, and kind of do what, uh, what, what Tyler Higby's been able to do and maybe a little more on top of that. I, I really do think 
it's a two-man battle. I don't think that Hunter Long is really in there. I, I think that if he were going to present himself as a viable option, it would have happened by now. Uh, we know that Colby Parkinson is an NFL tight end, even though he got used in a very specific way in Seattle. I think the Rams may try to use him slightly differently, maybe more as an offensive player as opposed to just as a sixth offensive lineman, the way that he was used traditionally in Seattle. But I, I think the battle comes down to him and Davis Allen. And if if I had to guess, D-Mac, and this is just me speculating and just seeing what I've seen and knowing how Sean McVay operates a little bit, from the beginning of last season until we got to the very end of last season when the Rams lost to the Detroit Lions in the wild card game, Davis Allen went from never, ever seeing the field to kind of sort of being a guy that they used in pretty important situations. So I think he's probably got the inside track. Now that they went and picked up Parkinson, I think me leads me to believe that they believe that they need to improve in that position. But I would probably give the slight edge to Allen because I know how complicated the, uh, the, the tight end position can be in a Sean McVay system. And having had the advantage of being there for at least a full year might give him a, a, a narrow lead going into camp. Yeah, I think they're going to definitely absolutely 100% use Allen as a weapon, and he has the potential to be that guy. And if you just throw it his way and he's a vacuum and all he's doing is catching footballs, it's going to be tough to keep him off the field. So I think that he's getting a great opportunity there. But the Rams were up to something this offseason, and that something was building a better running game. You went out there, you solidified the interior of this offensive line, and then with Kobe Parkinson, you might look at that deal and say, wait a minute. 22 and a half million, 15 and a half million guaranteed for a guy that really didn't have a ton of production. I mean, 20, 23, 25 catches for 247 yards and two tutties. That's it. But wait a second. You look deeper and he's one of the best blocking and run blocking tight ends in the sport. Last year, his run blocking was eight out of 83 amongst tight ends. That was ranked by PFF. So that is where he's at. He's a great run blocker. And I think that is going to be the focus. And I also think that he can emerge as a talented pass catching tight end as well. Yeah. The the pass catching is, is a TBD, right? We'll, we'll, we'll see, we'll see what it looks like the, the more he gets used in that role. But I, I think you bring up the best point, which is they spent money on him and they didn't spend money on him to just have him stand over there and, and watch. They, they spent money on him for a reason He's very good at creating space. He's very good at creating holes for running backs. He's very good offensive uh, blocker as far as the tight end goes. And and you're right. They drafted, uh, you know, Blake Corum. They leaned more heavily on Kyron Williams the later the season went. And if that's how they plan on using that tight end position without Tyler Higby, if Allen isn't able to present himself as a viable offensive weapon as a pass catcher, maybe they rely more there. I, I just always default to this. Sean McVay wants to throw the ball. You have Matthew Stafford as your quarterback. I just have a hard time envisioning them just grinding you down on the ground. So I still think that's why Allen's slightly ahead because he's a better pass catching tight end. But I, I really do think that's the battle to look at going into camp. 100%. A couple of things too. I want to point out Pete Carroll, when he looks at tight ends, it's, you block first, you pat, you catch yeah. second, right? That's really the mentality. But look at Jimmy Graham and what he did up there. And also, you look at the fact that he was drafted as a number two tight end, but then he goes to number three because of the Russell Wilson trade and no offense. So really, there's a lot of reasons why he didn't have that overall production. So I think this could be a steal if he realizes the potential that they think that he has. But we're going to break down these position battles every day leading up to training camp. We'll get another one tomorrow. Got the safety position, wide receivers. I mean, so many really interesting position battles heading into this season. But coming up next, we're going to continue to break down the schedule. What will the Rams record be after 10 games? That's coming up next on Locked on Rams. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are exactly right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free, right? When you find that right person, Doug and I talk all the time about finding the right guy for the team. Well, what about your team and putting somebody in that fills those skills exactly right? But LinkedIn isn't just a job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals that you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job but might be open to that perfect role, right? In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not on LinkedIn, 
you're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. Here's what you do. You post your job for free, for free, at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-F-L. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. And we are off and running here on Locked On Rams. Thank you for making Locked On Rams your first listen every single weekday. Free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Locked On Rams, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Also, a special shout out to those everyday listeners out there watching and listening to every single episode of Locked On Rams. And you can be that every listener too. And if you haven't been an every listener the last couple of months, definitely now is the time. I mean, we got eight Sundays away, right? I mean, we were Leonard Floyd days away a couple of days ago from the start of football. So definitely get locked in, watch and listen to every single episode. Membership is 100% free right now for the Every Listener's Club. So you don't want to miss a thing about your Los Angeles Rams. Now, Travis, we're going to pick it up in the second segment where we were yesterday, the next five games in the Rams schedule. So before we do that, though, we got to talk about the buy because it's an interesting buy for the Rams because you yeah. get that buy there early in the season. A lot of teams, you want to get that by a little later, can make adjustments, can really take advantage of that rest and kind of have it as in between the two halves as possible. But that's not the case for the Rams. No, it's not. And, you know, this is, I think, just the way that it kind of breaks down, DMAC, because it feels like and since the Rams have come back to L.A., they've had somewhere between kind of right in the middle of the season, which I always think is the best place, to late in the season, which would be my second choice. I have I'm going by memory here. I don't remember exactly, but I really don't remember them having a bye this early in the season. I don't like it, but what are you going to do, right? You get it when you get it. There's not much you can do. Use it to your advantage. You know, if you're cruising and through those first five games, you're four and one or whatever it is, man, you know, cross your fingers, hopefully five and oh, use it to rest up those little injuries and, and gear up for a very long stretch down the break. Uh, I guess what the good news is, the Rams do have a lot. I think they have two Thursday games this season, so you get a couple of mini buys later in the year. Uh, I, I think that may help, but I, I don't love the fact that it comes as early as it does, but th- it's literally one of those things. What are you going to do about it? Yeah, they definitely have not had a buy this early. Week six, a week six buy is incredibly early, and you look at when you get to November and December, when you get injuries and attrition, you really just have to stay healthy. I mean, it's as cliche as it sounds. You just have to avoid that and just have some yep. luck on their side. Like now, as far as their overall schedule, it's ranked 17th easiest. And it depends on how you look at those kind of rankings because a lot of those are just based on the Vegas win totals, and that's what they yeah. use as their key metric. And we know that you look at the Rams' win total last year. I mean, you're at like five and a half, six games in a lot of sports books, so you kind of have to throw those out of the window when it comes to the National Football League. Yep. But the biggest key to after the bye week comes in week seven when it's the Las Vegas Raiders. Shout out to Chris Berman and shout out to Greg <laughs> Berman too. Shout out to all the Bermans. But <laughs> the Vegas Raiders, that's a trap game. That is your classic trap game at SoFi. Raider Nation will be there in force. And yes, this Raiders team, they're projected to be one of the worst teams in the National Football League. You went out there, you signed... Gardner Minshew, but Aiden O'Connell, he's going to be your quarterback. You went out there, you added Christian Wilkinson, Wilkins to try to solidify that line there. But still, I don't think Wilkins and really is enough. And Max Crosby yeah. and that defense, yeah. they're probably not going to be up to snub for this one against a Rams offense that by this point of the season should be close to firing on all cylinders. Yeah, look, I get it. The Raiders are a popular team in Los Angeles. SoFi Stadium is going to be filled with silver and black. I get it. That's that's just the the reality of of Los Angeles and of the visiting teams. And and the Raiders are probably at the top of that list. Um, Raiders are bad. You know, I, I I think the Rams will win that game. It doesn't concern me a whole lot because this isn't something that Sean McVay struggles with traditionally. I, I think that they will be pretty good. I think you get up knowing that, you know, if I'm, I'm picking a team. If the Seattle Seahawks are coming to SoFi Stadium, you know, whatever, they're there all the time, and you know that it's going to be a, a fairly tepid crowd. You know that it's going to be fired up because it is the Raiders. The Rams have handled the Raiders uh, pretty well in the Sean McVay era. So I, th- that one really doesn't worry me all that much. I think that's one of the very few games that I'm comfortable putting firmly into the W category like we talk about so often. It is the NFL. Anybody can beat anybody, but this one feels like a very, very good opportunity for the Rams. I think they win that game comfortably. 
That's a dub for the Rams. Then week eight, TNF, the second primetime game of the season for the Rams, taking on the Vikings. Yeah. And I'm excited about this matchup because this is one where at this point of the season, are we seeing Sam Darnold as their right. starting quarterback? Or is it going to be J.J. McCarthy, who is very young? All the guys that came out, he was the youngest of them all. He's got the national championship pedigree with Michigan, but they ran a very different style. They're going to be running with Kevin O'Connell. So it'll be interesting to see where they're at at that point of the season. Brian Flores is someone who has definitely given Matthew Stafford and McVay a little trouble in the past, but it's going to be an interesting one to say at least. I still think the Rams win this one though. I, I do too. It's at home. You know, those short weeks are brutal. And it's even more brutal on the team that has to go on the road because you lose a day to travel. So I, I think the Rams have an advantage right there. And, and you mentioned it as well. The Rams, or I should say the Vikings quarterback situation, at best will be mediocre, right? Your, your two options are Sam Darnold. And I hate this because I'm a Sam Darnold fan. I've always thought that he just needed a, a chance that didn't include the Jets and the, the Carolina Panthers, two trash organizations, to, to get a chance to play. He really hasn't. Uh, obviously, they're getting ready for J.J. McCarthy to take that job, so I don't know how much of a real chance he's going to get in Minnesota. Uh, you'll either have a, a Sam Darnold who's on a short leash, or you're going to have a rookie quarterback who's just getting started. I like the Rams in that one, too. Yeah, the time you think of Sam Darnold, think of Haley Joel Osmond. You know, I see dead people. He sees ghosts, right? So I don't know if he's seeing ghosts anymore. He's kind of gotten past yeah. that. But yeah, honestly, kind of a journeyman. But I will say he's had a better career than Josh Rosen. So, I mean, who has that? that? Yeah, <laughs> I can. I was just, you, that first time I was really speechless. I mean, that, that, that cut me deep, Travis. I don't appreciate that one. But then you got week nine, November 3rd at Seattle. Yeah. Seattle's always interesting. I mean, new head coach Mike McDonald's gonna be weird to see that team without Pete Carroll on the sidelines. We know Sean McVay's success against the Seahawks, but it is up in Seattle. It depends on how their season's gonna be starting and where they're gonna be at that juncture of the season because. It could be a down year. You never know what you're going to get with Seattle. I mean, a couple of years ago, they're going to have a down year. They had a good year. Yeah. Last year, they're supposed to have a good year. They had a bad year. Or they had an okay year, and they were just out of the playoff mix. And then the Rams coming off that mini buy, it's a road game. So it could be tough. It's kind of a coin flip game for me. I still think the Rams go up there and win because it's Sean McVay against the first-time head coach with that Seahawks team. I still like the Rams in this one. Yeah, me too. I, the, You know, the, there are matchups that you just feel good about, and the Rams against the Seahawks is a matchup that you feel good about. Pete Carroll uh, isn't there anymore. I, I think that's something that we're going to have to get used to looking at. Maybe it changes a little bit different. You know, maybe not for the better for the Rams, as good as Pete Carroll was. I think that Sean McVay kind of understood what Pete Carroll was trying to do against him, and, and I had a little bit of an advantage right there. Uh, I, I, I like this one for the Rams too. I think that this next five-game run, is the spot for the Rams to put some money in the bank to to really win some games and 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 put themselves in a position to not just go into the second half of the year uh, with an opportunity to compete for a division division title to compete for a playoff spot? But keep in mind what we've been talking about really for several months here. Put yourself in a position to look attractive for the return of 99. And these are some games that you have to win along the way. So when you do get to week 13, 14, and you're looking at that record, is it a position that somebody sitting at home in Pittsburgh watching saying, I want to come back and do that? These are the games that you need to win. I like them winning this one, too. First time head coach, Sean McVay on a mini buy. McVay yeah. 10 and 5 all time against Seattle. Really could be a better record if you look at some of those games in 2022. So, yeah, yeah give me the Rams in that one. Week 10 is going to be interesting. Not going to take a victory lap. I'm not one of those guys. But I did say that the Dolphins was going to be a primetime game, and it turned out that it was Monday Night Football. I love this matchup, man. A great jersey game. We love a great jersey it game, Travis. It it's going to be a great jersey game. The Dolphins in that aqua, the Rams and their soul, and you look at the Dolphins. I mean, the the really big concern I have in this one is if their offense is right and they're really on track at that point of the season, well, that short passing game is something that yeah. always scares me against the yeah. Rams defense. Will Chris Shula correct that, or will it still be an issue? And it's going to be Monday Night Football. All eyes are going to be out in SoFi Stadium. I think I'm going to just predict the loss there just because I can't have this team going 72 Dolphins against the Dolphins. <laughs> so I need some L's in here somewhere. I'm going to say the Rams lose that one on MNF. Yeah, it's an interesting one. Look, th this, this 
portion of the season is when Tua Tagovailoa looks like a really good NFL quarterback. This is the part where he's really cranked up and looks really good. Tyreek Hill is explosive. He's one of the most dangerous guys in the whole league. So this is the portion of the season where, you know, whether you're listening to Locked on Dolphins or watching ESPN or Fox or whatever it is, you know, hey, you know, it's a great pick right now. The Miami, yeah, cool. In October, that's always what the Dolphins feel like. But that's when the Rams get them. I, I'm with you. Uh, you, you don't win, you know, going on four, five, six game winning streaks in the NFL doesn't happen very often. There has, you have to stub your toe. And if I had to pick one, I'm with you here. I think that's Miami. And you nailed it, D-Mac. Tyreek Hill in space against this defense. Okay. <laughs> I mean, g- good luck. The Rams don't have any. I don't know if the league has anybody that can run with that guy, but the Rams in particular, uh, that that's a matchup I don't love for them. It's going to be tough, but I will say, though, that – this Dolphins roster in 2024 is not as good as the Ro- Dolphins roster in 2023. Jalen Phillips, you got Bradley Chubb, both recovering from yeah. injuries. Like we just talked about for the Raiders, they acquired him and he was on the Dolphins with Christian Wilkins. So it's not as good of a roster as, but man, it's the thing that scales you too is McDaniels, someone that, uh, is, I mean, comes off that coaching tree. So, yeah. I mean, it's always something that really concerns me as well, but uh, it should be exciting. I mean, can't wait to see another Monday Night Football game at SoFi Stadium. You can say, yeah, me too. I, and look, I, the Dol- I'd rather play the Dolphins late in the year when Tua turns back into Tua. I, I'm just not a Tua believer, but there's always that four, five, six, sometimes seven, eight week window in the middle of the season where he is just absolutely terrific. And that's where this one lands. It's the time I get the, the Mike McDaniel, the Kyle Shanahan, the yeah. LaFleur. It always yeah. concerns me just a little bit. Sure. Then week 11, November 17th at New England. So it's the second 10 a.m. Pacific time start for the Rams. So it's an East Coast trip. Rams flying to Beantown on a short week, too. A short week on the road. Big question for me is, who's the quarterback for the Patriots at that point? Is it going to be Drake May? Because the Patriots, they're going to still be one of the worst teams in the National Football League. I think Mayo has a lot of potential as a head coach, yeah. but I think this is where you get a bounce back dub for the Rams. They get this win and they're seven and three after their first 10 games. Yeah. I, I like them winning that game too. I think the Patriots are very under talented on offense. I'd be stunned if it wasn't Drake may by the time you get there. And by the way, this is another rookie quarterback. The Rams could have three rookie quickers, Caleb Williams, JJ McCarthy, Drake may, they could see all three of those guys in the first 10 games uh, of their season. That's an advantage, I, I think, for them. Uh, but you nailed it, right? It's early in the morning. It's on the East Coast. It's against a team that, you know, Mayo, who knows what that looks like, right? You At least with Bill Belichick, you kind of had an idea of what he was going to try to do to you. As daunting of a challenge as it was, at least it was a familiar challenge. Uh, I will say this, though, when it comes to those 10 a.m. games on the East Coast, Sean McVay has come as close to cracking the code on how to do that as anybody else. The Rams have had a great deal of success for a West Coast team going East for that early start. Uh, More or as much as just about anybody. Um, And I just don't think the Patriots are going to have a great season. So I like them winning that game as well. Absolutely. I think that's definitely something that you love about Sean McVay is understanding kind of how to crack the code on that and how difficult it can be. Miles traveled. I mean, hey, we know how his influence has been on the NFL with not playing the starters in training camp and everyone copying that. I mean, those those little things that Sean McVay has kind of mastered to an extent or at least had a lot of success compared to other coaches on this coast. So definitely love that. So 7-3 and after 10, we're going to break down the next five tomorrow. But coming up next, we continue our countdown of the most important Rams heading into the 2024 season. That's coming up next on Locked on Rams. We all love sports, right? I love them. DMAC loves them. We love them so much, you never want them to stop. But as you know, we're into that part of the season, right? It's just kind of baseball at the moment. There are fewer and fewer games. And, you know, there's just not quite as many things as we'd like to. But FanDuel, they let the sports keep going whenever we want. All you have to do is open the app and dream up bets anytime that you are in the mood. And this summer, FanDuel hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone 
every day, all summer long. Look, you hear Doug and I talking. This is Locked on Rams, but we talk a lot of Dodger baseball on this show. What about Shohei for a triple crown? What about Shohei for a batting title? What about Shohei for MVP? You probably don't want the Dodgers in the division. Not great odds there, but what about the Dodgers getting to the World Series? All sorts of great baseball bets over at FanDuel. But you got to go there, right? FanDuel.com. FanDuel app on your phone and start making the most out of your summer. FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. And welcome back to Locked On Rams. Thank you for making Locked On Rams your first listen every single weekday, free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Locked On Rams, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, Travis, here in our third segment, we're going to pick up on our countdown of the most important Rams heading into the 2024 season. And we're at 19 with Braden Fisk. Now, before we get into Fisk as a player, I think it's important to point out that he was the biggest overpay in the draft. According to ESPN's draft evaluations picker, the day two overpay, I mean, they gave up the 52nd, the 155th, and the 2025 second round pick to Carolina for the 39th pick. That was the biggest overpay in six years. So point is, they really loved Braden Fisk. They wanted to combine him with Jared Verse, see if they can kind of recapture that yep. seminal magic. And it tells you that they really felt like we got to fill Aaron Donald's shoes. We're not going to do it with one guy. We're going to do it with multiple guys. Yeah, like you said, when you, you know, it's it's the, you want the car, you want the house, you want whatever it is. Like, I'm not going to let somebody else get this. I need to have it. I'm not going to come in there uh, a, a little heavy and make an offer that the other guy can't match. So maybe that's what they did with Fisk. I, I, I always, Dave Mac, you know this about me. When it comes to draft stuff and did you overpay, did you underpay, let's talk about this in 2027. Then we'll know, right? They, right now, everybody. Yeah, a lot of people overpaid for their houses in 2001, right? <laughs> exactly. That That's exactly right. You overpaid for your house and then you turn around, it's triple what you paid for it. Did you really overpay? Probably not, right? Um this is one of those things that the cost of it won't be known for quite some time. What matters is how he plays on the field. I expect him to play pretty well. I like what you said about pairing him with Jared Verse, somebody that he's familiar with. The wild card in all of this is Chris Shula. The wild card in all of this is a first-time defensive coordinator putting together a bunch of young guys. Keep in mind, Kobe Turner, Byron Young, second-year player, Braden Fisk, uh, a, a rookie player, Jared Verse, a rookie. These are four of your 11 starters at least, and you don't have that veteran leadership of Aaron Donald that's been there before. You do have Ernest Jones. You do have some other guys that you can lean on a little bit. But this defense is going to be young at its core, and you've got a first-time defensive coordinator leading the charge. I, I, I think that this is a fascinating component of the Rams teams. Like th We have no questions about what that offense is going to look like, assuming health, right? But even assuming health on the defensive side, I don't know, man. I, I'm, I'm optimistic. I think they've got some good players there. But what does that look like without 99? What does it look like without Raheem Morris? We simply don't know. That's why guys like Fisk, guys like Verse, really need to step up in their first years. Yeah, that's a great point about all this unknown because the truth of the matter is we haven't even put the pads on yet. No. So we don't know what it looks like in pads. And Sean McVay said that you can feel him at practices. Well, Good. let's see what he's saying after the pads are on. And that really is the biggest difference. And I do love his versatility. You can play him at tackle. You can play him at defensive end. And the Rams really haven't had a highly productive defensive end in quite some time. But I think this really is a pressure move on Kobe Turner. Can Kobe Turner continue to take steps in the right direction? Will he build on that momentum? I, because I, I so. can't wait to see him without Aaron Donald. Very anxious to see because if he continues that success, Braden Fisk can be a guy that can help him and eat because of him. Turner and Young need to somehow, some way match or get very close to matching their production from a year ago. And do it. I mean, that's that's what's that 17 sacks between the two of them? Okay. And 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 you the Aaron, I mean, we all saw the pictures. Aaron Donald's got three guys blocking him. Okay. There's that leaves they, they, two other guys to go other places now with Aaron Donald not there. Let's see what it looks like. And that's why Fisk and that's why Verse really need to step up to take some of the pressure off of Turner and Young. 
We need that Fisk versus Buddy Cop movie, man. In an off season, everything goes right. I mean, BFF's right there. But that's going to do it for this episode of Locked On Rams. My name is Doug McCain. You can follow me on X and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. And you can follow the People's Champ, Mr. Travis Rogers, at Travis Rogers. Until next time, whose house? It's Locked On Rams' house.